Today, we're pleased to be joined by a longtime festival favorite, pianist and a wonderful instructor, Anton Nell. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes and, and chatting with us today. It is lovely to see you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, first question that we always have been asking during this series is, you've been doing okay, you've been healthy and, and managed through this time of the pandemic. I have been, thank you. It's been a very interesting time for all of us. Um, I'd like to think that it's been very productive, even though I am so happy to be returning to some sense of normalcy and to playing for people again. I've played about 10 concerts now in front of live audiences and I keep reminding myself that this is really what I signed up for and not playing for my iPhone in my living room. It's a very different experience. I was gonna, gonna ask that, uh, you know, how was that first concert back when there was an audience? What was the, the feelings that you had walking out onto stage and seeing faces excited to hear live music again? It was really very moving actually. It was with the, uh, with the San Antonio Symphony and it was the last Mozart concerto, which I had specifically chosen for the occasion. And just uh, hearing applause was wonderful. And I, it was like giving my debut. The orchestra has a long introduction for the first movement. And I was sitting there going, will I ever get to play? My heart was beating in my chest. <laughs> and then at the end of it, you know, the audience was just, you know, as quiet as mice throughout the orchestra played wonderfully. And there was enough applause at the end that sort of warranted an encore. And then when I turned around to speak to the audience to announce it, I suddenly realized that I had no voice. I sort of sat there in this, it's on the film, dude, this little squeak came out. It was just <laughs> too much. That it was really a wonderful experience. You know, we are glad, uh, you know, looking ahead to this summer a little bit, uh, we've got a chance to not only have you for our online festival um, that we'll be streaming so people all around the world can, can enjoy our music, but we'll be back in the concert hall, which we're very excited about for a few performances, which, uh, which you'll be a part of as well. Can you talk a little bit about the music that you'll be playing when you come here to Seattle? You've got a lot of Brahms on the docket for us. I am so happy about that. First of all, um, I used to be such a regular during the summers in my early years until I was full-time at the Aspen Music Festival and that kind of threw a wrench in the works. Um, but luckily, of course, the Chamber Music Society also has the concerts in January, so I didn't miss on my opportunities to come and play in Seattle. But this year, because of the pandemic, Aspen has also been downscaled, and so they only, they are doing the full eight weeks, but the faculty are all going for limited residency, so I'll be there only for the first session. So I immediately called James Ennis up and said, hey, do you need a pianist this summer? And I was just so lucky to be able to be, you know, needed for the last week. And I am playing two amazing Brahms works that F major cello sonata with F. A. Baltasar Gill and also the C minor piano quartet uh, on the closing concert, which I love very much. And also a pre-concert recital with one of the Hummel sonatas, which is a wonderful piece. It's been one of my uh, pandemic projects, one of many. Excellent. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I mean, thinking of that, have you had the chance to kind of explore some rep over these past, God, year plus now uh, of, of things that either have always been on the shelf or you thought, I'm, I want to revisit some pieces. Um, what has been keeping you musically excited in this time when concerts have been fewer and further between than, than wanted? <laughs> I really did learn a stack of music. There was several were, there were several just things that I've always wanted to play. I mean, and there always will be many things that I want to work on but I completed several large works that I've always wanted to play you know staples actually things like the Schumann fantasy and some Schubert sonatas and lots of Bach and Hummel and so on but then I also went through a whole lot of music that 
is a little out of my comfort zone. I get, for example, some contemporary things, including some, you know, one of the George Walker piano sonatas, uh, some Takamitsu. I read through all of the Albanus Albieria, uh, Iberia, excuse me. Um, a, a, a really a stack. Um, and then this coming summer to in um, at some of the other festivals, I'm playing some unusual things. I've just sort of challenged myself, things, you know, David Baker, Sofia Gubaidulina, um, Arturo Marquez, you know, just in addition to all the standard Dvorak Schumann Brahms canon. It's been fun. I've tried, I've been trying to um, uh, broaden my horizons a bit. Yeah, that's terrific. <laughs> you know, it's a good time to do it, so might as well dive in when the time presents itself. Uh, I'm curious, I know that, you know, you're very active, obviously, down there at the University of Texas and at Austin. Um, what was teaching like for you during this period? Was it a, a tough transition at the start? Are you now back, you know, knowing that Texas is open? Uh, I know it's the end of the school year, but did you get a chance to work with some students this year? In well, I was extremely lucky. Um, my office at school, uh, which is a nice room, but it was just not big enough with the airflow exchange and everything for two people. So I could not teach there. But this room that I'm in, this is my living room and it's very large and long. So I could teach my students here. Yep. So um, sort of in, the, in front of me here, um, about another 15 or 20 feet away, is the kitchen counter. So I sat behind there and taught <laughs> my students. Um, all but five of them um, were not here. And so I did do, I did my share of Zoom. <laughs> Heaven knows. But, um, you know, it was also the best we could do. Everything of that went well. But my students loved coming to my house for lessons. Um, and also this room was wonderfully useful for a lot of recordings and audition recordings and recitals and everything could happen here because it's such a big space. So that... In that way, I feel that I was just very, very lucky. Uh, we will now return um, you know, to 100% normalcy in the fall, but, but, but of course, school is now closed for the summer. Yes. So. But I did, yeah. have a, I did have a, teaching-wise, I would say I had a, a better experience than most. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's wonderful that you have that space. Yeah. I'm curious, so I see there's two instruments behind you, and, and I know that you are uh talented with with many of the keyboard instru instruments whether it's piano forte piano harpsichord i'm curious as you switch between them how much adjusting does that take i mean i know that the action is so much different do you have to spend extra time rehearsing on all of them do you pick one up when you know you've got a, a concert on the harpsichord coming up or how do you balance being able to play you know such different instruments that are in the same family, I guess. Yes. They are also different. Normally there's a harpsichord here that, that sort of lives over there, but it's 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 not here at the moment. But um, it takes it takes a lot of work and a lot of adjusting. Um, and I have I don't I've never played the forte piano and the piano in the same concert, but I've played the harpsichord and the forte piano on the same program. And it, it's it's quite it's quite difficult actually. I mean, I spend a lot of time practicing on them, and but I'm so used to it now, and um, obviously my my love for the instruments, you know, is so great that that it's just something I know that for for an hour or two, I may sound quite horrible if I haven't practiced them for a while, and then you know the memory sort of comes back and you uh, you adjust. It's it, uh, it's may been making up such an important part of my life now for the past 10 years or so that um, I, I can't see see it any other way. It's wonderful. I saw in another interview, I think it was with the Fort Worth Chamber Music Society that you did uh, back in the fall, I think it was, um, that you actually have learned and revisited some of the pieces that, you know, were would originally have been played on a forte piano and you have played them differently or learn things and, and adjusted how you play. Can you talk about like some of those refinements, I guess, that have happened from playing the different instrument and moving back to the piano, which is more typically heard? Absolutely. Um, I think before I uh, 
knew so much about playing these instruments and also knew as much about performance practice as I do now. I th and I think that's the, the case with a lot of, with a lot of us who, who, who play the modern piano, is you learn to play things in a certain way. But when you actually play the instruments that they were written for, um, and you become part of this different sound world that they have, you understand, especially in terms of articulations and certain markings that the composers put in that are baffling when you play them on the modern pianos, why, do, why you have to pick up so often, why you have to slur so often, why does this seem so thick or thin or whatever. And then suddenly they make sense. And so when you take it back to the modern piano, you find ways, I mean, you cannot play them exactly like you do on the forte piano, but you can do something with a nuance that makes that more stylish and more clear and more crystalline, if you were, depending on what you want. But yeah. it's been so educational to me. And uh, my students are wonderful. They uh, they always know when I've been practicing a lot of harpsichord <laughs> or forte piano because, because suddenly nothing they do sounds quite right. <laughs> they know, however. <laughs> Uh, that's great, you know, and I, I, it's it's such a gift, you know, music and, and any of the arts that, you know, you can continue to learn and evolve and adapt. It's not a, a closed book that, you know, that performance practice can influence a more modern instrument. I, I think that's really wonderful. Yeah, and I had the opportunity to to play uh, all three instruments a lot this year on virtual concerts. I, I um, recorded a lot of um, music by the Bach family on, on, mm -hmm. um, on, on the harpsichord. I practiced harpsichord a lot this year and several forte piano programs with, you know, CPE Bach and Hummel and Haydn and, and all this Mozart. It has been so fantastic. You know, knowing that you are a longtime attendee here at Seattle Chamber of Music Society, I went back and looked at all of the, the festivals. So you, this will be your 36th festival between summer and winter festivals. Um, you know, I, I don't know if that's quite 36 years because some years you were here for both summer and winter, but it's it's close. It's it's, it's more maybe, than 30. 32 or so, 31, 32, yes. Yeah. For you, how have you seen this organization sort of grow and change from, you know, that, that first visit? What stayed the same and what's made this place so special that, you know, as you said, you called James to say, if you need a pianist, I can be there this year. Why do you love coming to Seattle just so much? You know, I will always remember the first summer that uh, Toby Sachs invited me to come. And this incredible sense of camaraderie and closeness between all the artists and then the closeness between you and your hosts, you know, they become like family after all. I mean, the I stayed with with my hosts with Dennis and Yvette Glover for 25 years before they moved wow. away. I was I was bereft. <laughs> <laughs> but and also the important partnerships you forge here with people that I've been playing with, you know, people that I met here, I've played with for many years, you know, in other places. And um the I, and I believe that the festival developed, of course, even from before I came into what it was when I, when I came, you know, in terms of just the scope and, but the basic fundamental things have always stayed the same. The fact that everybody is so close, everybody is social, everybody loves playing together, everybody enjoys music. And when you come here, it's, you know, it's, it's like visiting your family. You so, you basically picked up where you left off the last time. So I, I absolutely love it. I mean, I'm definitely now, you know, one of the, probably the, the, uh, the, the oldest and longest coming person, because I remember, you know, people like, um, well, when James came, I remember I played his first concert with him. I believe he was 19. Yeah, the yeah 19 or 20. Yeah, he was, and, you know, he was at that point, um, I mean, an up and coming, you know, a wonderful young player. And, and I mean, and he's now, you know, one of the greatest violinists in the world. 
And, uh, and you know, not, and uh, what I always admired so much about Toby Stacks is that she, she had this knack of finding people and putting them together. And I think uh, James has not, not only inherited that gift, but as sort of what he's done with it is, is been absolutely exponential because the, the festival has just, over the years, it just keeps growing from strength to strength. And it's a, it's a significant thing on the musical map. It just is. I mean, people love coming, people love playing, and we all feel very lucky to be part of the fabric. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, you, you alluded to it there, is this idea that, you know, we all of the musicians that come are at the very, top of the field and you know some of the finest that, that we could bring but there's such a intention about pairing musicians together that it's not just okay here's three musicians we're going to do a piano trio but how do we put these three voices together to create something special uh have there been you know it's a long time and, and a lot of visits but have there been any moments where you know you sat down with a group and you just thought in particular, like this is going to be something special, like the the way it just came together and and the musical personalities that you know particularly stands out for you over over the so many years that you've been here. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, there have been uh, there have been just absolutely you know wonderful. Uh, I mean, I mean, wonderful experiences. Uh, for example, I mean the one that that jumps out right away was this was still during the lakeside school days mm -hmm. um when toby Sachs had the idea that uh that john kimura parker and i should play the rite of spring together that's still i think one of those <laughs> concerts that's you know sort of st sticks For, out. forever etched in <laughs> yes and um in recent years uh there was a wonderful foray piano quartet a few years ago where where, where james and i played with cynthia phelps and I think maybe beyond, maybe beyond Tangles. It was just one of these things that, that, that happened in such a, a, a wonderful way. Well, we can't wait to have you here. Uh, it's really not too long, in just a little over a month for, for both the streaming festival, but also those live that live performance. I, I know there's a lot of excitement for us here since we haven't been able to be back in the hall to, to get in and and hear live music. So we're we're so glad that you get to take part in that as well. Me too, me too. Lovely chatting, Seneca. Thank you very much. Great.